Hi guys, I have another Copic coloring and card tutorial for you today and today I'm coloring Gift from Millie by Make It Crafty. I'm sorry if you can hear some sounds in the background, I'm actually on a, a vacation home, my boyfriend parents vacation home uh, when I'm doing this voice over and uh, there are neighbours and there are lawn mowers and I can't really do anything about it. And on top of that uh, they are actually building on the house that I'm in so yeah, there's a lot of sounds there, but that's <laughs> totally okay. I actually recorded these videos before I left and now I'm sitting and editing them. But yeah, I am using Sandy Elmox, uh, the human rainbow uh, chart for this skin. I do work uh, adding extra lights and extra darks and such to the um, skin colors. But um, this is one of the darker ones that I picked that I really, really liked and I wanted to do. Um, the chart is for free. I put a link down below and you can go and uh, check that out. She also has the hex chart where you color all of your Copics, which is really, really good. Not only can you learn how to kind of step out of just using the same basic threes of colors all the time, um, I have found a whole bunch of different color combinations that I really, really love that I shouldn't, wouldn't have done without that. But also you can very easily, if you don't have the full um, set, you can see which colors are closest and maybe not, not buying two colors that are too similar. Because you get uh, the empty chart and you also get a pre-colored chart that you can download and print out if you want to. Um, when it comes to uh, kind of um, learning and 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 such, um, Make It Crafty has a whole bunch of tutorials that Zoe, uh, the owner, has created and they are brilliant. Uh, you can always come into the group, in the Make It Crafty group, to ask questions about it. Uh, Zoe is very, very happy to answer. If you download it and use it, it is brilliant. She has a whole bunch of information it's jam-packed and it isn't that expensive and you still can have that uh, help tutorial help i think she also has a section on the uh, store page where you can get help from too so i really encourage you go check them out at least they are brilliant i learned a lot from those tutorials also i also learned a lot from actually watching uh, people artists uh, doing their creations. Sandy Almock is one of those uh, but she has a lot of card making in that too but I'm also watching a lot of artists that just do art, how they use Copics to color, how they use color um, not only to do Copics but how they use color in any way and you can learn a lot from that and it's, it's wonderful. Uh, when it comes to my coloring here it's just I, I just had fun with it and tried to kind of figure out where I wanted my shadows. Um, I am using some blue greens for her hair. I really love the combination of this dark skin together with that blue green. I also really really love that lime green that I chosen for her eyes. They really really pop. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah I I don't know, the, the color schemes I pick, I just look at the hex chart. So I'm not going from these, I'm going to use BG49 as my darkest, and then I'm using BG15, BG13, and BG11. Um, and yes, the, the 15, 13, and 11 are in the same kind of family, uh, but the BG49 isn't. But it works perfectly with these colors. I really, really think the kind of blend feels very natural even though she has green hair but I told you before I have pink hair I really enjoy seeing people who who are comfortable in their hair whether or not it, they can be brown they can be blonde they can be any colors purple blue as long as you're comfortable that is the color for you and I'm very comfortable in my pink hair much more comfortable than I ever been in my brown hair. I do like blonde, 
sometimes I, I wonder if I should go back to blonde. But yeah, I kind of digress, go off the topic. Millie has a very straight, straight hair, so it's quite a simple um, colouring job of it. Uh, what I'm thinking about is how the strand goes, and this has very a lot of dark lines that help you kind of figure out how it's falling. And then I'm thinking about where would the sun hit to make those kind of uh, shiny places, and where would it be a little bit darker, like where it bends on back underneath uh, back at her neck and stuff like that and then I just try to add those um, that coloring to those pieces. I actually started out here not uh, caring about trying to make shadows around her ha head, uh, around the hair band thingy. I am actually going in later when I finished coloring the whole image to add some of those drop shadows. So yeah, uh, and then I just covered the whites with the BG11 to kind of tone that down those shines a little bit because I didn't want them white bright. Here, here I go in with the BG49 to add the uh, drop shadow just beneath that little jewel thingy so that you can see that it stands out from her hair. When it comes to a dress, um, I chose to work with a paper this time uh, with some My Mind's Eye papers. Uh, my Mind's Eye is one of my absolute favorite paper creators, uh, together with uh, Graphic 45 and uh, Doodlebug Designs. Those are my three absolute favorite paper creators. And uh, in this, they had a lot of uh, deep oranges and lighter like yellow oranges together with both this the green in her eye and the blue green so I knew they would work together and therefore I decided I'm gonna do this as strong coloring and also I think a darker skin actually um, layers better for these kind of colors I know that every body skin is different mine is I can't have lime greens I look really, really sick when I have lime greens because the green will reflect directly into my face and it will kind of take all the color out of me. And I knew that some colors suits better for different skins and I really feel that uh, these kind of bright oranges and reds goes hand in hand with this darker skin. So I really like it. When it comes to the shadowing on her dress here, doing a little bit of shadowing on the, the hairband. Um, only going in with two colors on that because I don't want to uh, overdo it. While on the dress I'm using uh, a few more. Shadowing the uh, wrinkles in her dress, I'm trying to make it look like it's kind of wavy, just as the image has been colored and I really I like how these turn out. I chose to also color in her socks because I first thought I would have them white, but they were a little bit too stark for the rest of the image. And I'm using my colorless blender to remove all of those places where I've gone outside of the image because I do go outside of the image and the colorless blender is such a savior. I'm cutting this out with my cutter bees. Uh, half of the cutting disappeared because I ran out of space on my memory card. And now for the card. This is going to be a standard A2 card uh, size. So I'm taking and doing my mat first, which goes to 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and an eighth. And I'm doing my pattern paper to put on my map mat that's five and a quarter by four. So that will give an eighth of an inch around uh, on the mat and then eighth of an inch uh, where you see the card. I'm also adding a strip of a paper just across to kind of lift Millie off the pattern background pattern paper. I really like to do this kind of card um, as you might have seen. Uh, I like having that little extra piece of pattern paper just kind of giving it an extra little dimension even though I'm not doing very much. I love the clean and simple look 
but with pattern papers. So I, I love working with them um, in that way. I'm using a Crafted Companion tape runner uh, for all of my taping. They have 22 meters length. I think that is 72 feet. I'm not fully sure about that, but they're very, very affordable. You get four for 10 pounds. And I think I go through somewhere around 10 a year or something like that. And I do a lot of cards. I do four to five cards a week at least. So they do they don't run out that fast. They're not refillable, um, but uh, as they are as cheap as they are, that's not a worry for me. And if you drop them, you can actually put them together. Again, if you drop them and they break, because I have dropped mine before, several times. Uh, now I'm going to make the uh, sentiment. And for the sentiment, I'm using my powder tool because I'm going to gold emboss. I'm using the Ranger uh, Fine Gold um, Embossing Powder because I really love it. Uh, this is part of the Apothecary label set. Um, and I'm going to have that beautiful uh, notice about how wonderful you are together with a happy birthday. Um, I started, as you can see, I have a happy birthday at the top of this. And I started doing that and, and put these stamps together on the same block. But they're coming from different stamp sets. So they actually had different heights. So I had to re-stamp it and stamp them one each. I'm using Versamark ink. Uh, because it's sticky, it stays sticky quite some time, so you can actually just take your time when you want to do the heat embossing. These are the different um, sort of um, dies I'm using. So it's the apoth apothecary dies uh, for the little uh, you are original part, and then I'm going to use some stars on the card also to add some some idea. The happy birthday, I'm going to cut down to a little flag and add underneath the original. And this is why I have uh, put the text very high on that little um, label. I'm doing some flag ends on them. And as you see, I'm cutting first in the middle where I want the uh, kind of dip to be. And then I am cutting in from each of the corners. I saw this on, I think, uh, Ellen, an Ellen Hudson video or something like that. I've seen it all over the internet, but I think the first time I saw it on an Ellen Hudson video. Um, I think it's a brilliant way of making flag ends. I have put my little uh, different things onto foam tape. It's the 3M Scotch foam tape. Um, all of the different, both my sentiments and her is put on that. I really love it. It doesn't build a lot, but it builds enough to give that really nice shadowy effect um, around my images and my sentiments. And I'm just putting down my two sentiment parts and building that together. Um, I'm making my card base from some Nina solar white 80 pound cardstock um, I cut it in half it was letter size is cut it in half and then scored it at four and a quarter I love this little scoreboard from Martha Stewart it it is brilliant I just love using it because it I can make all my own um, card bases and as in Sweden we have A4 sizes which is not just letter sizes so we don't have a two cards so therefore uh, I need to make my own card bases. Then I'm doing the final touches on the card base um, using these little stars that was from that um, lots of stars die set. Uh, I've cut them out in a matching card stock that match with her hair and then I'm coloring all of the stars in with my clear Wink of Stella pen. This is a technique I learned from Jennifer McGuire. She used the first the uh, glitter pen on 
top of her uh, die cuts and then she adds some uh, glossy accents on top and that gives a whole new glitter effect the glitter is sandwiched between the glossy accent and the paper and it looks brilliant when it has dried uh, so it's a really nice effect to have on the cards I'm just um, a tip when you're doing your uh, glossy accents if you keep the nib into the glossy accents when you add it you get less bubbles every time you lift the nib out of the glossy accent you might get some bubbles so if you keep your nib very close to your paper when you're applying it and then just push it around with a nib you don't get that much bubbles it's a very nice tip but that was the card for today i hope you liked it if you do please thumbs it up if you have any questions just comment down below if you want to see more like this just subscribe and as you see here you have two different videos where i'm using some more make it crafty images thank you so much for watching bye